Hey there everybody, welcome back to Headphones Neil Reviews. I'm your host as always, Headphones Neil, bringing you my second review for Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic 2, The Sith Lords. So in this, for, for this particular review, I wanted to switch up the review, kind of like what I did for Knights of the Old Republic 1, where I played through the game on the light side and dark side um, playthroughs of the game. So I've already, since I've already played the light side version of Knights of the Old Republic 2, I decided to replay it on the dark side mode to um, play it as a comparison to see generally how the gameplay was, how it holds up versus the light side, and just generally play through it to see it for an overall enjoyability. And the one thing that stands out when you are playing the game, or when you're playing Knights of the Old Republic 2, is that the story feels relatively light and uneven compared to the light side mode, which leads me to believe that, um, much like Knights of the Old Republic 1, which for the rest of the episode is called KOTOR to make it easier to say, but the game is generally heavily, ba- um, leaning toward, or KOTOR 2 is generally leaning towards the light side play through the game as the canon storyline, but the one thing you notice in KOTOR 2 versus 1 is that the stories are generally unevenly balanced towards the light side and the on KOTOR 2, whereas in the first one, the stories felt generally evened out. So you in the first game, you generally get the same story arcs, but limited character interactions when you do go down the dark side because you're pushing people away. In the second game, the sto- the missions and quests that you get are generally cut down, and the game feels a lot more incomplete and rushed. Even though you're going to, to the same planets, the overarching quests are there, but a lot of the side quests are not. So, or maybe not a lot, but a few of the side quests are not there. Um, notably, the Hanhar and Mira um story arc to complete their um interactions on Malachor 5. I one originally thought it might have been because I did not really speak much with Hanhar in the dark side playthrough, but I didn't I did not also speak very much with Mira on the light side playthrough, so it was kind of weird and it felt odd that it skipped over that storyline when I was going from the Malachor depths into Treyas Academy. The other minor quest that stands out is um, helping the TSF agents and the Republic soldiers when you're transitioning from the Ravager, I believe, to going over to Treyas or to over to Malachor Five, or when you're going from Dantooine for the Lost Jedi quest over to Ravi- over to the Ravager story arc around that time to help the TSF agents on Tilo Station. So. Granted, that one kind of makes sense to not have, but it's one of those things that would have been nice to kind of pull some dark side points to say that you're not going to help them or let them do it on their own or something along the lines of what we saw on um Korriban in the Shirak cave where you tell the your Republic soldiers when you're doing the flashback to the war with Revan that you tell the soldiers to fight on ahead and you don't do anything um, or let them... Basically, they all uh, sacrifice themselves because you're telling them to charge through. So overall, the dark side playthrough didn't work out or wasn't as enjoyable as the light side as I might have thought. Um, The other thing that kind of struck me as as not evenly balanced was the uh, dark side force powers. So granted, you can build them up slowly over the course of the game, but the one thing that stands out is if you get um, force powers like drain life or uh, plague or kill or anything like that, a lot of those powers do not really seem to work until the last third of the game. So as you're getting those powers my only recommendation early on is to make sure you have lots of shields and med packs or have a party member that has force heal because a lot of those powers that you would think are cool and work or expect would translate over as evenly balanced from the first game don't really hold up until the later part of the game. But when they, when you do have enough force power and they do start working very consistently and well, they are very nice to have. So force storm is good. 
Um, Death Plague, which is the ultimate power of Drain Life, is really cool. Um, Force Choke is really good, which I'll get to in a second. But overall, the last third of the game is more enjoyable on the dark side, just because you get all of those cool powers. Um, kind of along what you see, the lines of what you see in um, Star Wars: A Rise of Skywalker with Emperor Palpatine at the end of the movie, which. I mean, I guess it makes sense that when you're translating it as that we don't really see those powers until the very end of the film. And, te- and also, I guess, to that extent, the very end of that, of the Skywalker franchise. But in the game, it would be nicer to have it be more evenly balanced. So it's one of those things where Force Storm, I think, is the only power that kind of works the best because it doesn't really require the opponent to have much as long as if you have a shield, it kind of overrides that. But overall, that's the only power that really works the best. I mean, and I'm not really counting four speed because that's your a localized um, power to your to the player. Um, so as far as Kotor two goes, I want to say that the gameplay is um, a lot better on the light side, just because the powers work better throughout the game and they're more localized to your player and to your party. Whereas the dark side powers kind of really only make sense and work well towards the end of the game. So if you're looking to, or if you're looking to expect the dark side on KOTOR 2 to be like the first game, I would not expect that too much. But if you are playing the light side, you'll find that the light side on KOTOR 2 is a lot better than the first side. Just because battle meditation is there and that's a very good power. Force heal, run, um, he- for shield and all those light side powers work well throughout the game the dark side not so much as i mentioned at the end the only redeeming power uh, to me for the dark side playthrough is force crush as a pretty nifty power to use to get through um, a lot of a, a singular opponents so if you're when you're towards the end of the game basically the uh, easy way to get through darth scion on darth treya is to use force um, choke repeatedly and over and over until their powers are go down. And by repeatedly using it, granted it does use your a lot of your uh, force points, but um, like for, for Dark Sign, before you get into to fighting Kray, you can let your force points heal. But by repeatedly using force crush on Dark Dar- Sign, it does not allow him to uh, recover and use his force powers or lightsaber against you so essentially your force your health is uh replenishing slowly but replenishing and you're killing him off slowly or you're killing him off relatively easy and quickly um and the funny thing about the using force crush is that you can use it on um, darth treya's lightsabers as well as part of that battle so as long as you're using or you're fighting her lightsabers one by one, then it is relatively easy. So essentially you run away from her lightsabers. One of them will follow you. You crush that. You find another one by peeking around corners. Let that one see you and fight that one. And then you finish the third one and you're essentially done from there. So with all that being said, the KOTOR 2 overall is a decent enough game. Granted, there's a lot of stuff missing. There's a lot of oddities and quirks and incomplete um, items in the game. So I think weird things happen when you're playing the game with story arcs and um, interactions and things like that. So granted, not knowing that probably makes it a little bit easier to get through as a game, but it would be nice, for example, to have seen the um, HK-47 planet um, and kind of have this be more of a canon storyline, in my opinion, because it doesn't really feel like the Sith Lords is doesn't really fit well with anything. It would have been nicer to um, have Revan come back, and may, or maybe even have the I mean, have find this um, Evan Hawk in the galaxy where Revan went to. And deal with all that or something that ex- kind of expands the story arc, um, or maybe even find the Ebon Hawk coming back and use the, use Malachor 5 as a starting planet, um, basically either as going into Treyas Academy and going f- into the deep or into deep, into the deeper outer core where Revan ended up or, 
um, start at Korriban, then go to Tr- um, Treyas Academy on Malachor 5, and then off to other planets in the deep um, outer room, wherever Revan ended up, to expand that storyline. Um, this f- felt like a pure sequel just to have a sequel rather than anything else. So overall, if I was to grade the dark side playthrough, I'd probably give it about a 5 out of 10. It was okay. The positives are basically just the force, the dark side force powers that you get having red lightsabers, which you can technically do on the light side as well. Um, playing on Malachor 5 was decent enough. Um, the rest of the planets were okay. I mean, we go back to Korriban and Dantooine, which were in KOTOR 1. Um, having Onderon and D- the Onderon and Duxin story arc was decent enough. Um, it would have been intriguing enough, I guess. Um, and even ha- ending up or starting the story with Malachor 5 and going to the um, droid planet would have been nice. And finding HK-47, who knew where Revan went, and he left HK-47 there um, kind of as a um, reveal for in case... Mitra or Bastila ended up finding HK-47 to find out where he went and then going after him would have been a better story arc in my opinion than this one just because most of the rebuilding of the Republic was all fine but um, I kind of wanted a little bit more as far as storyline for the rebuilding the whole starting the story with the, the Sith Lord's half explained kind of felt like the rest of the game was filling in a third of the story arc over a bunch of planets so I was kind of hoping that or I kind of wanted a little bit more um as far as um content and story even if they just kept the same um planets I just I wanted the story just felt okay nothing um Nothing worth noting, kind of, and didn't quite live, or did not quite live up to what we saw in the first story. So that's all there is for this particular review. So if you have any questions, comments, concerns, or anything like that, you can find me on Twitter at PatelN01. The website's PatelN01.com for past episodes, subscription links, supporting the show, and all of that good stuff. Uh, the YouTube channel is YouTube.com slash PatelN01, and I'll have a link in the show notes for um, with the uh, gameplay playlist for the dark side version of the game. Um, the light side playlist is also up on YouTube for this game as long as well as with both light side and dark side playthroughs for KOTOR 1. But that is all for this particular review. And of course, if you're patrons, I gave an update this past weekend for the upcoming film review um, schedule. Starting with some exciting news for um, a watch through or this year's watch through for a specific film franchise. So um, look out for all of that coming soon. And of course, if you're a patron, you can check that out already and start providing your feedback if you um, have any or if you've already seen those franchises or want to include your feedback there as well. But thanks for tuning into this particular review and until next time.